It is insanely hot right now in the UK. In this office right now, it's like 31 degrees, literally 31.5 degrees. If you're wondering why I'm looking a little bit sweaty, a bit greasy, that's why. All right, so with more and more people working from home, probably now more than ever, compact PC systems are becoming more and more popular, especially for people who don't have the space for large towers. This tiny little computer from Zidu only costs 200 pounds, and it could be a great option for you. Quick disclaimer, Zidu did send me this to review, but they've not paid me for this video and they've not asked me to say anything in particular. All of the opinions in this are entirely my own. So before we get into the tests and stuff like that, let's take a look at the specifications. So the Zidu Filmac Mini PC has Windows 10 Home pre-installed, and that's pretty good because Windows 10 Home costs around £120 if you were to buy it from Microsoft, which makes this PC like £80 if you think about it. The CPU inside this thing is an Intel J4115 processor. It's a quad-core processor with four threads. It runs at around 1.8 GHz base frequency with a 2.5 GHz burst frequency when you need it. In terms of the GPU or the graphics card, we have an Intel Ultra HD 600 graphics card. This is definitely not a high-performance graphics card and we'll be testing it later with some games, so stick around for that. In terms of RAM, we have 8 GB inside and unfortunately this is not upgradable, but for most use cases, 8 GB gigabytes should be fine unless you're doing some really intensive tasks, but if you are doing really intensive tasks, I don't think you'll be getting this PC anyway, so 8 gigabytes for most light use should be fine. Now in terms of storage, we have a 128 gigabyte eMMC, which is expandable. You can expand the storage either via the SD card slot or with a USB drive, or you can even put in an M2 SSD up to one terabyte. So that's pretty good if you're planning to use this for multimedia and video streaming. In terms of display support, we can output 4K up to 60 Hertz via HDMI 2.0. We also have a VGA port, and I'm, I'll be honest, I've not seen VGA for years, but this is great for older tech and projectors and things like that. Now in terms of connectivity, you can get online with a 1000 gigabit per second ethernet port, We've also got dual band Wi-Fi, which is performing as I'd expect, and it's picking up my internet at the maximum speed. And we've also got Bluetooth 4.2 if you want to connect a mouse, keyboard, or speakers. Now, in terms of additional ports, this has three 5 gigabit per second USB 3 ports, an SD card reader with SDXC card support, and a headphone jack. So, plenty of options. Now, connecting this up and getting it started is pretty straightforward. I'm connecting this to my monitor with this Fezlink HDMI cable. This is an 8K cable capable of running up to 60 Hertz, which is perfect for my ultra wide, as this is pretty high resolution. So hopefully I shouldn't have any problems using this HDMI cable. I'll link that in the description. So right now I'm using a Logitech wireless mouse and a USB wired keyboard. I'm going to be breaking this review down into a few different categories, which hopefully you'll find useful. I'll be going over some benchmarks, what it's like for web browsing, document work, photo editing, video editing, and finally gaming. These categories are quite broad and should cover most people's needs. Now it is worth mentioning before we get into this that this PC is aimed at more low intensity tasks. So I'm really gonna be pushing it to its limits in this review. For the purpose of this video, I set the ZDU up at a 1440p resolution. Now, although it is capable of running on my ultra wide, I thought it was a little overkill to force this thing to push out over 5,000 horizontal pixels and a 1440p output should be a fair test for most users. So first, let's take a look at the Geekbench score. Now this score is definitely not up there with, you know, a high-end PC. And for an example, here is my PC compared to it. I have a 3700X AMD processor and an Nvidia 2070 Super. So my PC is, you know, much more higher spec than this tiny thing, but we know that this isn't a high spec system. This PC really is just aimed at document work and video streaming. So next, let's take a look at the disk speeds of that eMMC. Again, not an amazing result, but the read and write speeds are okay. I'm not gonna have much of an issue with these, and I think for day-to-day -day use, these are fine. If you're interested in knowing what all these different results mean, I'll link an article down below and you can go check that out. So as expected, the Zidu Filmac has no issues with streaming and web browsing. This is absolutely fine on this device. I was opening a bunch of different tabs in Google Chrome, and it was kind of maxing out the RAM at around five to six gigabytes. But just bear in mind that we do have a maximum of eight, so we're already pushing the RAM maximum. Now, 1080p video streaming on this is fine. It's a little bit stuttery here and there, but I will just quickly mention that to record this footage, I'm using OBS, and that is quite taxing on the system. Even on my high-end gaming PC, 4K 60 FPS, we start to see a decline in performance. This is certainly more jittery compared to the 1080p footage. 
One thing that I did notice is that as soon as I moved my mouse, the footage became jittery, like straight away. So I'm not sure if this is an issue with Windows or if this is just an issue with the PC in general. If you're watching content and you don't move the mouse or do much else, it's fine. It runs really smooth. But as soon as you move the mouse, we start to see those jitters. So that's something to bear in mind. Okay, so web browsing and streaming is pretty good on this. Let's move on to document work. So for document work, I mostly use Google Docs. I also tested this with OpenOffice and again, the performance was fine. So for document work, the Zidu Filmac is perfect. So next, let's go to video editing. And here's where, you know, this test and this video starts to get a little bit unfair, to be honest, because let's face it, we've seen the specs. We know that this can't really handle 4K video editing or even really 1080p video editing. But let's talk a little bit about how this performed with Premiere. So the footage I'm editing here in Premiere is 4K from my Sony a7 III and from my Ninja 5 recorder. This footage is super jittery. I can't even watch it with zero effects on it, even at one eighth quality we're seeing some issues here. You may be able to edit 1080p footage on this, but let's be honest, if you're a video editor, you're gonna be handling loads of different file types, whether or not it's 1080p or 4K. So getting something like this is not really gonna be suitable for you. Now I wanted to see how this performed in terms of rendering. So I rendered a one minute clip and it took so long that by the time I went away from the computer, I completely forgot that I was even rendering something. So I forgot to stop the stopwatch. But you can see here that the media encoder report shows that it took 20 minutes and 18 seconds just to render one minute of footage. This is definitely not a video editing computer. Next, let's move on to photo editing. So for this, I'm opening a Sony a7 III RAW file. These are about 6,000 by 4,000 pixels. These are big files. And actually, you know what? The Zidu didn't handle this too badly. It's definitely a bit stuttery and I wouldn't recommend using this again as like a main primary computer. But if you have one of these and you just have to edit on it for, for whatever reason, then at least it's not gonna be too bad. Camera Raw runs fairly smoothly, but it's definitely, there's a bit of lag. It feels like, you know, you move the sliders and it just takes a little bit of time to actually do what you want it to. Even zooming in and out, there's definitely a delay there. But if you're planning to edit much lower resolution, or if you're just working at say 1080p, 1920 by 1080, you might not actually have too many problems. And the Sony a7 III RAW files are quite demanding. Even on my, you know, high-end rig, sometimes I can get a bit of delays. You know, if you're doing some light photo editing, this actually might not be too bad. Now, I feel like a lot of people may be interested in getting this for gaming and just having like a small computer that can be in their bedroom or something like that. I'm gonna be completely honest here. Gaming is a no-go on this. That Intel Ultra HD 600 graphics just cannot handle modern titles. I tried to play Fortnite on this and I wasn't even getting like 10 FPS sometimes, you know, it was really struggling. And these were on really low settings as well. I'm talking 720p, everything turned down to low. Now I did actually start writing a section about Counter-Strike on this because I wanted to give that a go. You know, usually that's a good benchmark because it's not a graphically demanding game. And I don't even have much footage recorded because it's just struggled so badly even running that. So the Zidu Filmac is definitely not for you if you plan to do some gaming. So what can we take away from this video? Well, clearly the Zidu Filmac is not for video editors, not for photo editors, and definitely not for gamers, but it does perform pretty well with video streaming and really well with document writing. So if you're someone that just needs a cheap budget computer, maybe to work alongside your main system, this could be a great option. I just wanna close off this video by saying that if you're looking at getting this, honestly, don't expect too much from it. This is definitely a system that you wanna hook up maybe to a TV, to do some media streaming, you know, maybe watching just a bit of content. This isn't a powerhouse system. Don't expect to be, you know, gaming in 4K, editing 4K footage. That is just not gonna happen. But if you need a small compact PC for document work, bit of video streaming, this would be perfect. Overall, this performed pretty much how I expected. You know, I saw from the spec sheet that this wouldn't be something that would handle a lot of hugely intensive tasks. And I think the performance is actually pretty good for the price. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave it a like. It really helps out my channel. If you have any comments or questions about the Filmac Mini PC, feel free to leave them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. If you want to see more content from me, be sure to subscribe and hit that little alert button as you'll be notified when I upload something new. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.